Well, hello, Watchtower database. We're in hour like 18 or so <laughs> of this thing at this point. Uh, this is a pre-recorded segment. So real me is probably trying to take a nap right now, but who knows what's going on? I don't know. Uh, and I have my mustaches hopefully back because I've shaved it off because we've reached 70,000 subscribers. And if not, oof. Well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Your shirt's different. Uh, yeah. <laughs> From the shirt that I know you're going to wear in the future. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll just purposely wear this shirt. We are here with John Trumbull. He is a writer on Back Issue, among a billion other things. Uh, we know him, or met him, I guess, because of Back Issue 99. And then, uh, but he's also drawn a handful of DCAU coloring books that you might be familiar with. I know I certainly was. Uh, a lot of the, when, when I found this out through your Facebook, uh, looking through all the albums that you've got in there, the pages, that was like, a, oh my God, I, I would spend hours sitting on the floor as like a 10 year old, just like tracing over the top of these. And it, it was you and who knew <laughs> kind oh. of a thing. So. <laughs> you, you don't still have your copies, do you? I'm sure I do because I think you're, uh, cause you were talking about how, cause you, you did the Batman swinging into action and Superman jailbreak. Yep. And there's a couple other ones. But yeah, you've got them back there with you. I, I got them handy for yep. this. I definitely uh, had oh, that geez, deep freeze. Wow. I definitely had the this deep freeze one, um, which ha you said had reprinted oh, some of the. Yeah, this, this reprints uh, swinging into action. I just yeah. had this because it was handy. Um, yeah, I drew. Oh well, let's see. Yeah, my pages. Here, here, here's where my pages start. I don't know yes. if the camera. Okay, but. Yep, I'll probably I'll try to put up some of the pictures next to us too. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that that Batman picture in particular, and then there's one of Mr. Freeze standing there with his gun. Uh, that's that you said is one of your favorite pages. That's like both of this those. One. I would, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I like I like this one still. Yeah, I did this. In, uh, let's see, uh, beginning in 1998. It was early 1998, yeah. and I did this for uh, little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Dante. I I would have been uh, 25. Um, when I was drawing this, and uh, Steve Conte, who was a licensing editor at DC Comics, um, I went to the Joe Kubert School um, in the 90s, in like okay. the mid graduated in 97, and a thing they do, I think they still do, or at least did, um, was right before we graduated, it was a three-year school, um, they took us all up to DC to just kind of show our wares, um, show our portfolios to the editors. And uh, I had some Batman animated sample pages and I showed them to uh, Steve Corte, who was the licensing editor there, there at the time. And uh, he, he liked my stuff and we stayed in touch with after that. And hi, Kitty. Um, and uh, and he, he uh, and then uh, right on, right before Christmas of 1997, he gave me the assignment. He was like, hey, I want you to draw half of this coloring book. It was a 64 page coloring book. So I drew 32 pages of that. And actually my buddy, Lawson Wallace, um, he drew the other half of that. So that was very special to us. That was our first ever job for DC Comics. And we, we got to do it together. Uh, it's kind of funny because you see Lawson's stuff all over the like, uh, you know, archives of DCAU artwork, like purchase this for hundreds of dollars. It's this ancient, perfect, pristine DCAU artwork, model sheets, blah, 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 websites. But mm -hmm. you, I've never seen a John Trumbull original show up <laughs> on one of those. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I still have the original art. I don't, I don't like selling my original art too much. Yeah. So um, the, the anchor um, would have gotten, uh, half of the pages he, he got like it you know they they distribute the pages back to the penciler and the inker and if you want like a particular page you can say hey i'd really like that page mm -hmm. um, uh so mike DiCarlo has i have i have no idea if he he would have sold them um i don't know i never asked <laughs> <laughs> well and i was also looking through your I, I stalked your facebook for for all this little your captions on on these posts mm -hmm. these pictures <laughs> You were talking about how on the Superman one in particular, I'm sure it happened with the with the Batman ones too, that you 
you, you no one gave you any sort of model sheets or background models or anything like that you were just going off of like pausing episodes that you had taped and stuff like that for uh, that's that's not entirely true i okay. did get, um actually here's another prop i i, have, I did get a style guide yeah <laughs> uh, i want it um, give it to me so yeah. I got, got, this is i mean this is still one of my holy grails here you know, this is the thing they give out to licensors mm -hmm. and model sheets and stock art. Um, yeah. and I was I was able to track down I was able to track down one of the ones from the new Batman Adventures, and mm -hmm. those things those they're just a treasure yeah. trove. Yeah, of of behind the scenes info and and stuff like that. They're they're really cool. Yeah, and it is it is neat to see like the 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 creator intent on some things. Um, you know, like they'll refer to bits of backstory that never happened. Um, but for like model sheets, like they did not have every single character in that style guide um, because like that's put together while they're putting the show together. Um, so I didn't have model sheets for Bizarro or for Toy Man. And Toy Man, I kind of had to just basically draw him from the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I would, I was, and he was featured in like the second episode of Superman. So I was like pausing, I was taping every episode. So I was going through, and this is, you know, VCR days. Um, so I, I would go through and I'd be like, okay, well, Toy Man, he comes up to about Lois Lane's eye line, and Lois Lane comes up to about here on Superman. So I guess Toy Man's about yay high, you know, just because I wanted to draw him roughly yeah. the right. Um, and Bizarro is a similar thing. There were a few pieces of promo art with Bizarro, so I just kind of based it on that. Um, and there were other minor things like, uh, like the fan in the the Superman book, the Phantom Zone uh, villains escape. Mm -hmm. And I I wanted the Phantom Zone projector to look like it did on the show. I wasn't required to do that. I just wanted to do that because I'm a geek and I wanted it to be consistent. So. Um, yeah, so, it's yeah. always funny to me that that's the, that's what ends up happening with this stuff is they'll you know they want a a coloring book or a, a you know a children's novel or what have you in the DCAU style and they're like just they just oh, oh I hope you figure it out because <laughs> we yeah, we're talking to yeah that's kind to, of a that's kind of a story that we've heard mm -hmm. over and over again from different people was was at most they maybe got a style guide or a writer's bible and sometimes not even that and they were just left to their own devices mm -hmm. hopefully they had they had some some vhs bootlegs yeah yeah and um geez i i'm not even sure if i was online yet in at the beginning of 98 right. i, I might have just been on the cusp of that but i don't remember like searching online for uh model sheets or anything like that and i don't think there was much of that online by that point but, well, it uh, kind of makes me feel a little better personally about it because when I do our Legacies comic or I'm drawing, you know, commissions or something like that, that's all I have to go off of is whatever is publicly available. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any, I don't, and now I do because we've been scouring the internet for 20 years looking for this stuff. But right. back, you know, in, in when I'm tracing your coloring books, that's all I'm doing is <laughs> tracing your coloring books. <laughs> but I mean, and you're talking about, you know, not have you're you were kind of in the dark on the on the creators themselves back in the day you're you're uh, you're lower on the totem pole of, so to speak of of you know access to these people and yet oh, yeah. now, now you've spoken to you know half the crew on batman the animated series for back issue and stuff like that so yeah maybe half maybe half there's still like loads of people i would love to talk to that I haven't gotten a chance to talk to yet and i I, since I did that oral history for back issue 99, which I have right here. Mm -hmm. I've got mine in the other room, and so does Maddie. Mine, mine, mine's right up here on my <laughs> Oh, but yours is signed by 100% more people than mine is. <laughs> it has signed by a few people. I got, I got Jeff Conroy, uh, Andrea Romano, uh, Lauren Lester's over here, uh, Diane Pershing, and uh, Kevin Altieri. Perfect. Um, I mean, I was able to get these all in one fell swoop because yeah. the uh, East Coast Comic Con last year, um, I was able to do a panel with these guys because, I, and most of them were booked at the con because I was able to give their contact information to Cliff uh, mm -hmm. Galbraith, who runs the con. Um, so that that came together. 
um, and uh, got to do a panel. That's up on on YouTube. That's on my YouTube channel. We can, if you have, do you have show links on Twitch? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I could put something up at some we point. Yeah, yeah, link to it. But um, um, yeah, so I was able to get that that signed by them, and that was that was fun. Um, I'm sorry, we, we kind of meandered. What was... <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm also just babbling. I'm just, it's interesting mm -hmm. that, you know, now you've had the opportunity to talk to all these people. And, and a lot of the time when I'm reading stuff like that, of course, I have to just look at it and go like, ah, oh, why not me? I want to talk to these people. <laughs> why yeah, was this yeah. Don Trumbull guy? <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, why does, why does he... I, I thought that exact same thing. There was, <laughs> and like right around the time that back issue 99 came out because it was the 25th anniversary um there there was a, another writer whose name i'm sadly forgetting um but he he wrote an oral history for an online outlet that was like shared around yeah and like and, and he of course had talked to a few people that i was not able to um either through just lack of time or or just because i didn't have their contact info yeah um I mean, back back issue is a magazine that's primarily about comic books from like the '70s on up, and um, so I while I had a, I have a decent amount of contacts in the comic book industry, I didn't have as many in in the, like the animation industry. Um, so fortunately, in the age of Facebook, it's a lot easier to track certain people yeah. down. <laughs> well, for sure. I mean, like what we got our first interview with Alan Burnett because James was somehow playing words with friends with him. Yep. <laughs> that's that's very cool. I have not played friends with Alan. That probably like was, was something that gave the channel legitimacy for like future interviews was they probably were like, oh, they they talked to Alan. Well, OK. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot, all the people that we've gotten to talk to so far have been through similar circumstances of, you know, social media. You were, we've got mm -hmm. you on Twitter, that kind of stuff of just like, you know, people that are kind, kind hearted people. enough to talk to us lonely little baby boys here on the Watch Terror database. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we've proved we've proven a reason to talk to us by now i i think but <laughs> i mean yeah it's it's good when you can say like oh hey i talked to x y and z and they could they could vouch for me or or whatever that's nice i mean but the, it's it's always a thrill when like the first time you hear back from somebody if you reach out to them via email i mean a moment i'm always always going to remember was i I reached out to Kevin Conroy's representation because, you know, if you're doing an oral history of Batman anime series, Kevin Conroy is one of the people you really, really want to get. Mm. Oh, absolutely. You want Batman. And, um, and I got uh, an email just from him uh, personally one day, and it just said, let's arrange a time to talk. And there is no way you do not read that in Batman's voice. <laughs> just wrote me Batman. <laughs> yeah when we went to a, a, a comic con in seattle a couple of years ago and maddie had like just gotten on twitter not too long before that i think because phil lamar was his first follower <laughs> yeah like phil, phil lamar was like the, the first person who's like yeah i'll follow this guy and i'm like wait what why <laughs> <laughs> i think it was so that he could message you about you know where to meet up at the con but it was just a really funny like yeah oh this guy has zero followers let me let me be the first me fill them up that that is cool i got uh like i i have a few sources of geek pride like that i got a friend request from tara strong not she approved my friend request i got mm. a friend from her and i was like okay i'm living my life right yes. <laughs> <laughs> have to be friends with me I, um, I i i got the same feeling whenever she ended up following me as well that that's a whole thing. My mom was making like little Teen Titans Go finger puppets or whatever, and Tara saw me post them and was like, "Oh, I want one!" And I was just like, "Hey, like, do you have a PO box I can send them to?" And mm -hmm. she followed me. I assume so that we could DM back and forth. And I was just like, "Hey, like, you know, where where can I get these sent to so that you have them?" And she never messaged me. Oh yeah, but I mean, I've got the follow at least, so that's cool. <laughs> well, I mean. You can't take that per that stuff personally because 
you have no idea how many messages they are getting or responding. Oh, yeah, to. absolutely. <laughs> like, like someone, someone that like in the 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 public mm -hmm. sphere, it's just like I'm sure their 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 inbox is flooded. Like, I yeah. have a hard time checking my inbox when it's just two messages in there. I know, I know. There, there are so many times I'm just like, oh, I'm just not. I just can't well, respond to. Them. Except on Discord, Maddie, where you have like 160 messages. <laughs> Those aren't messages. Those are just notifications. Um, but yeah, Phil Lamar, very, very nice guy. I, mm -hmm. I did get to interview him by phone probably about mm, a year ago now. Uh, very nice guy. And, you know, he and I are, I think, a similar age. And uh, so we have a lot of the same geek reference points. And he's a, he's a comic book guy, as I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're just like part of this was just like us geeking out with each other it was like oh yeah wasn't that a great run wasn't this a great run? um and that was really fun um and uh <laughs> uh yeah yeah so i mean it's it's fun to like reach yeah. out to the and and in some cases get to know them as people and mm -hmm. in a couple rare exceptions you become genuine friends with them <laughs> um like i would say i am generally friends with um, Dan Reba now. I, I, that's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> I, have a, I have a weird, yeah, budding friendship with uh, Dan Reba, which is something I would never have expected to happen. He just, yeah. he just seems like the most like open person we've talked to yeah. through, through all he, of these. He's is, is, is very open and approachable. I mean, the first time I spoke with him on the phone, and you know, this is this is he, he doesn't know me from Adam at this point. Um, we, we ended up speaking on the phone for three hours, and I think that was at the end of his work day. Um, and, you know, by the end of it, we were just, like, exchanging uh, the theories about what's going on on Better Call Saul. <laughs> 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 so, you know, we, the, the conversation wanders far afield a few times. Um, like, a couple other moments, I, uh, Kevin Altieri, I would say, is a friend, because he goes back with uh, Cliff... Galbraith, who runs the East Coast Comic Con, um, he did uh, he directed a animated pilot for Cliff mm. uh, years ago. So so he's a guest at the show every year. So I've gotten to know Kevin a bit. Um, and there was there was one night we were hanging out at the hotel bar after the con, and they just decided to do a game where it's you know we're we're drawing uh, Batman at the bar, but they're supposed to be bad drawings, just like really rough, really crappy drawings. And, you know, I did one of just like Batman sitting as a couch potato, just like flipping the remote and uh, it gave him a gut. And, and Kevin looked at it and was like, no, that's too good. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was a fun like compliment slash insult at the same time. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I wasn't trying to make it good because, you know, I'm drawing, I'm drawing something that Kevin <laughs> all Terry's going to see. Yeah. Um, you know, so I so I, then I did a Matt Fiesel style stick figure Batman, and I just had him going, "My parents are dead." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to I mean, when in, in like middle school and high school. That was basically what I was known for was like, "Oh, James draws Batman all the time," and so any mm -hmm. any time that uh, in the rare occasion that someone needed a superhero drawing, obviously I was the person to go to, but also. If they didn't need a superhero drawing, they would probably get one anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But that was, I, I've always took that as sort of, like you're saying, like a half compliment, half insult is like, oh, that's all James can draw. But then now I'm in just in this like world where what else, mm -hmm. what other skills do I need to have? <laughs> like, that's okay with me. So. Yeah. Yeah. At least you have that skill, because I do not. <laughs> you, got a, you got a good beard. Uh, I'm not sure that counts. <laughs> oh, you, got, you got a beard. That's a marketable talent. You have t you have mathematical and chronological skills that surpass mine completely. So I'll, I'll, you you that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I did have I did have like a quick interaction with someone on Twitter the other day where like they post two different like algebraic equations and like I just went in and I was just like, this is X, this is Y. Here you go. <laughs> and, and they were like, I hope you have a job that 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 degree of math, you know, helps you for. And I was just like, I 
make timeline videos on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, if we need to know how old Batman is or something, we can figure it out. <laughs> like some goodwill hunting stuff. I mean, <laughs> like you're you're working as a janitor and you just all yeah. the uh, Oh, I'm 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 nowhere near Matt Damon's <laughs> level, <laughs> but you know, one day maybe. We're both Matt's. It's bound yeah. to happen. Sure, sure. Well, yeah. John, let's talk about, you're working on a, at least I assume you're still working on a, a book about the history of the DCAU. Yeah, yeah. This, um, was a, this was alluded to in the, in the back issue, your little biography anyway, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Um, not alluded to, outright stated. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, basically, I, the, the so if, if you, for anybody who doesn't know, like back issue 99, it was a big oral history of Batman the Animated Series. And I talked to, I don't know, a couple dozen people involved with, this, with the show. Um, most of the major people, I got to speak with Bruce Tim and uh, Dan Reba, Kevin Altieri. Those were the first two guys I was able to talk to. Um, Kevin Conroy, Andrea Romano, uh, Tara Strong, uh, Arlene Sorkin. Mm -hmm. uh, so like a, a whole lot of people I, I i did pretty well um considering like mark hamill was probably the biggest missing name um yeah but uh but i decided there for back issue 99 number two yeah 99.1 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i hey the issue sold out really quickly yeah. and uh if if you want uh, john morrow from tomorrow's to reprint it uh send him a polite request and <laughs> And perhaps he will. You can still get the issue digitally. The print edition mm -hmm. sold out pretty quickly um, uh, because of, you know, folks like us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you uh, so, bought a dozen of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did the math. I ended up writing about a third of that issue. It's yeah. like a 84 page magazine, maybe 100 issue. Uh, page he did that, that whole episode guide that's in there too, I think. <laughs> I, did, I did an episode guide for it. Um, and, you know, I decided well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to just duplicate other people's episode yeah. guides. I mean, I'm checking stuff with that, but I decided, like, I'm going to do it all from scratch. And so I'm, like, going into the credits and, you know, getting all that um, and correcting mistakes where I, where I found them. Um, so I did that. And then, like, while I was in the middle of that, my editor was saying, like, hey, we, we're doing a History of Harley Quinn episode uh, or article uh, in this issue. Um, and for reasons I don't remember, the original writer for that fell through. And he said, like, you know, would you like to do that too? And I, you want to make your editor happy. So I told, I told my editor, Michael Yuri, I was like, yes, I will do that too. And, uh, and that, and I was, I talked to Arlene and, and Tara for that article as well. And I was able, thanks to Mark Evanier, I was able to get in touch with Paul Dini and get some answers from him. Uh, Cause he's another person who if, I didn't get it. I would have felt bad that he wasn't there. Um, so I was able to write up for Harley, like her origins on the show, as well as um, uh, her introduction into the comics. And I took it through, I think, the first run of her her comic. Um, and uh, I remember at one point, one evening, I was, I was going back and forth with... Uh, Kevin and and Bruce Tim via email, and we were trying. They were trying to remember, like, okay, which episode was it that Harley first got her pigtails in? Because she had a ponytail in her right. early. And and I was just trying to because I want to attribute the stuff accurately. And and Kevin was the guy who did that, and it was in one of his episodes. I think Harley Quinade. If yeah, I remember I think so. But I'd have to double check that. Um, uh, you know, so I was like, you know, this is this is like the most trivial thing I could possibly document. But so much fun. Yeah. No, I mean that's that's all our channel is, so we, we don't mind. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if anybody gets it, you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just haven't figured out how to make a ten-minute video out of her hairstyle yet. But once we do, <laughs> we will. Yeah. Yeah. The top like hundred, you know, videos on the channel. You can just look at them go like Batman, 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 Harley Quinn, Batman, 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 Harley Quinn, Batman and Harley Quinn, Batman, Batman, Harley Quinn. <laughs> like it's mostly just that's all ever, anyone ever wants to watch. I don't know why we ever make any other videos. And according to some people, we don't. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are the most popular videos on your channel? 
Oh, I'd have to go look. I know one of them has been creeping up. Uh, we just we posted the um, the DC fandom uh, Beyond Batman little animated short. It was like a Batman Beyond uh, doing basically like a mystery science theater on uh, Batman sixty six, uh, and oh. it was just like two or three minutes long. We posted it to the channel, and it's just been bumping its way up to like eighth video on the channel, seventh video on the channel, We're like. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so our top our top five are um, the yellow bat suit explainer. Um, okay. the, the the comparison video of the uncut versus censored return of the Joker. Um, the one that James theorizes that the, the new Batman Adventures and Justice League bat suit are the same uh, bat suit. And then our first DC animated movie universe viewing order. And then, I still don't understand how this is in the top five, but Harley Quinn, just just James and Ted, you know, talking talking shit about who's Harley Quinn's father or Harley Quinn's kid's dad or whatever. Yeah, it, oh, I remember. It, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it's in Return of the Joker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're they're her grandkids. So who are her kids and blah blah blah. But it was all just this. It's it's just this nothing conversation that. And Ted and I had only talked to each other like in person, uh, like two to three times before that. So it's very awkward and stilted and nothing. And that's still in the top, you know, five six videos on the channel constantly. Now, now how how close are you guys all geographically to each other? I know you're all on the west coast. I'm on the east coast. So uh, James, James and I are on the West Coast, but Ted is on the East Coast. Ted Ted lives in uh, what North Carolina or yeah, South Carolina, North. and then and then James and and I are what like a five hour drive away from each other, something like three. that. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty close. So how did you guys find each other? All just online? Uh, Ted, <clears throat> Ted and I <laughs> uh, have have known each other on message boards and stuff since we were like 12 years old. Uh, just talking about, you know, a new Justice League episode would come out and we'd go discuss it with a bunch of other 12 year olds on, <laughs> on the internet. And Wait, then, with this uh, forums or somewhere else? Uh, Toon Zone, there was also a... Super uh, Buddy. Or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah, it was. There was also one called DCU Animated that eventually became Super Buddies. Um, that was a pretty popular mm -hmm. one around the same time. Um, yeah, Toon Zone's still going. Super Buddies is now a Facebook group that no one posts in, but it is what it is. <laughs> and then uh, I fell, I fell into their life <coughs> many years afterwards. Um, yeah, because like. I, I had I had a really weird period of my life where like my uh, my roommate just kind of you know dipped from town and I was I was left kind of struggling for money for a little while and had to end up moving states back in with my uh, back in with my mom for a little while and I had no friends there so I was just like okay well let me just watch all of the cartoons <laughs> all of them every cartoon I can I'm gonna watch it. And, and so that was my life for a while. And I, I finally, like, I hadn't watched, like, Justice League all of the way through. I hadn't watched Justice League Unlimited. I hadn't watched Zeta Project. So I was just like, all right, well, let me, you know, just binge through this whole universe. And then I started figuring out, like, all of the tie-in material existed and stuff. And I was like, all right, well, let me try to figure out where this stuff goes in correlation <laughs> to the episodes and everything. And I just tried to start, like, you know, building a timeline slash reading order for myself. And then I stumbled on them. Uh, they were doing, they, they started doing the legacies of the DCAU thing, you know, trying to bridge the gap between Justice League Unlimited and Batman Beyond. And I was like, oh, maybe, you know, with them trying to fill in these missing holes, maybe they've got like a decent timeline that they've been working on for a while together. And, I can I can maybe you know glean some information from them, and come to find out it actually worked the other way around, yep. <laughs> where they had like a one-page document where they were just like, um, these are some things that we kind of know, and I had to be like, well that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, Maddie, and, Maddie was our, our uh, golden goose. <laughs> yeah, I, I should. I was gonna say I should have introduced you for all the stuff that you did, plus being our like timeline nemesis. But <laughs> there but is yeah, no timeline, so, whatever. <laughs> I'm, 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 
frenemy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so I mean, yeah. they they decided that you know it would be nice to keep in touch with me at least for continuity uh, stuff for the web comic. And then after I moved out here to Seattle, um, they were just like, hey, you know, we want to do this YouTube thing a bit more seriously. Would you like to do a show on the YouTube channel? That way we have more content to pump out on a regular basis. And I was mm -hmm. just like, I was just like, I've always wanted to YouTube, but I don't know how or what I'm doing. And James is just like, just talk in front of the camera, send me the video and I'll take care of all yeah, of I'll the, do the rest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great. That's and great. And so so he walked me through like lighting and and sound tech and all that kind of stuff. And I'm still I'm still, you know, I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out all the time. I, I'm still trying to figure it out, so it's all good. <laughs> but it's been what, almost three years now that I've been yeah. part of the part of the channel. I think over. I think twenty sixteen was when you talked to well yeah, it's almost four. Well, I mean, 2016 was like when I came on to do like the, the Teen Titans talk or whatever. Yeah, and that was end it of wasn't, the year sometime, so. It wasn't but, until 2017 yeah. that I, you know, moved out here and started Vanish Report and everything. I think it was like February 2017. So while this is a five-year celebration of the mm -hmm. channel, <laughs> it's only my third year. And really, it. yeah, Maddie coming on <laughs> and us starting to do more content on, like more often is sort of the real start of the channel. I mean, we were we did like a video once a month at most uh, for a year and a half or so. And then start once we did the Yellow Batsuit video, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, people actually give a crap about what we have to say. We should do more videos. That what took you off? Yeah. Okay. That and the Teen Titans, Will It Cannon, or the, not Will It Cannon, but the the precursor, the <laughs> yeah, the proto will again. It's just me, Maddie, and Ted, just talking about Teen Titans uh, for you know twenty minutes or whatever. We came to figure out <laughs> at some point that if we wrote down all of the things we wanted to say, yeah, it would give us a better air of professionality <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than just than just doing this and posting it to YouTube. I mean, there's there's something to be said for a freeform conversation too. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I love you know doing the freeform stuff, but I, the numbers the numbers on the YouTube channel don't lie. Yeah. Our, uh, right. you know, our po our podcast stuff more or less kind of dropped off once we started doing the 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 scripted content. Though in terms of the podcast, I will uh, say you, when you were talking to John about the um, you know you went back to do the episode guide for the issue and you you oh, I, I got to do this from scratch. I can't. Trust yeah. you, I can't trust anybody else's stuff. I'm kind <laughs> of doing that with, uh, I, this is, I guess, a little bit of a tease for the future, potentially, for anyone watching, is uh, I'm hoping to start, uh, once, once, once I can physically get together with people again, I'm hoping to start uh, in a secondary podcast for our channel. Um, my friend Brian uh, is interested in watching the DCAU, and we're really good friends, but I've never... Show, like he's never watched any of the episodes. He's watched a handful of our videos, but haven't seen any of it. And so I'm, I want to sit down and just go through every episode, every movie. I'm not going to worry about the comics and whatever. Just any, all the visual, all the, all this on-screen stuff. Uh, now you're, you're, you're showing him Justice League Unlimited before Batman Beyond, right? No, <laughs> I'm well, going in air it, date right? order. Incorrect. Yeah. I'm going in air date order. Starting with the cat and the claw. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly what we're going to do. It, we're even going to do it down to all the mistakes, I, unless we, I decide to change this later. All the like errors in air dates of, you know, they'll show part one and then like three other episodes and then part two sometime later. Or in the case of Justice League, they showed Fury before they showed Injustice for All, so that didn't make any sense. The order of Injustice Gangs was that, that was, was tying in with a video game. It was, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I want him to have the completely like the same exact experience as me watching all these shows from start to finish. Of like, yeah, you're right. This doesn't make any sense because that's how we had to watch it. <laughs> so, all right, we had to wait. <laughs> but yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun, I think. And what I was getting at was I'm going through websites that have catalogs. I mean, I guess this is me trusting that someone else did this right, but it feels right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going through websites that have cataloged like, okay, 
the kids WB Saturday morning schedule from you know September 1998 to October 1998 Batman aired at 10 30 a.m. or something like that and also all so that whenever we watch these and do the thing I will introduce each episode is like okay you know we're on episode number this called this it aired you know, Friday, <laughs> November, whatever, 1996. It was, you know, all this stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that uh, and have, having seen his reactions to everything. So that's always the best part is like, just looking between the show and the person. <laughs> what are you gonna yeah. think about when Green Lantern you know, does this thing? So, yeah, yeah it, it's so fun to watch somebody else come to it fresh and, yeah. and just cover it again through their eyes. That's really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. In your um, in your coloring books, there's a couple of uh, poses, I guess you would say, uh, that <laughs> we've been noticing, or you've been noticing at least, uh, have been. You noticed them better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I, we we pointed them out in the videos. Like Maddie, Maddie, you noticed the Joker uh, pose being the same as that bang gun pose that you drew. And then yeah. I tracked down where it was from, and then it turned out that you were the artist for that coloring book. So then it was just this weird little and circle of like, what? <laughs> so. and, and the kick for me when I was watching your video, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. It's it's very surreal to see yourself, like something you did pop yeah. up in a video not expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just comes down from the top. Oh, hello, Joker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that oh, was I, even a version I, I, that someone colored in paint or something. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, so does any of that, like, you, you also talked about on a couple of your Facebook posts of these pages of, you know, there was that Batman pose in the in the one you were showing off earlier that you, you pretty sure you saw that in like a Gotham Adventures issue or something like that a few years later. It was a panel in some issue or another of Gotham Adventures. I want to say somewhere in the 30s. Okay. Um, when we're done recording this, I can track it down yeah. and, and tell you. Um, but yeah, it was uh, like the po the pose is the same pose. So I was just like, oh, I was I was swiped in comics before I broke into yeah. comics. I'm, that's a first. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when we're talking about you know referencing the shows, I'm sure that there's times when the artists are crunched for time or they're just, you know, they don't know, they want inspiration for something and so they'll just, oh, I've got, like, I've got, you know, a whole bookshelf of back issue and coloring books and comic books, DCAU stuff over, over mm -hmm. off camera that if I ever need a Legacies uh, inspiration, I'll usually go to one of those. So I'm sure that there's just this telephone game of your Batman pose going on and on, and on for eternity. <laughs> Absolutely, and I can I can point to a page in the in the Superman book where I where I swiped a pose. So I mean, it goes <laughs> it, it it goes both ways. Yeah. <laughs> like this, like this page with Jaxer and Mala, the the Jaxer mm -hmm. pose. Totally swiped that from. Oh uh, yeah, I, I recognize the hand. <laughs> it's the exact you, same. You see the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so. I, I think that's the only actual swipe I did in the book, but uh, you know, maybe you can probably more. find that hand in the style guide you have right next to you too. Put <laughs> uh, very well, yeah. yeah. I put the uh, the Justice League style guide. They um, because when that show came, it premiered in two thousand one, so they did a digital style guide okay. for that. Yeah. And you don't I, happen to have that, do you? <laughs> I had that, but uh, like some of the files have been corrupted in in switching computers, so I don't have all of it. I can just... see what I have and, and send it to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> The physical ones are a lot more fun. We just we just saw it on eBay, and, and it was like $150 or best offer. And so I, I went in with a with the offer about half of that and did not get it, <laughs> but got a notification that someone else did for 125 so if you're watching this person that was, got I, was, it. Yeah. I was just sitting there like well drats like uh, you know i wish yeah i had i had known that someone else was you know kind of sneaking in on that because because i i don't maybe done the 126 i don't know the, the the way i i handle ebay auctions to keep my sanity is just i figure out okay what is the maximum amount i am willing to pay for this thing and I bid that, and then I just walk away. And then if I win it, great. Yeah. If I did, uh, okay, it'll come around to, again to me someday. Yeah. Because you know, that, otherwise, you drive yourself insane, and you're making insane bids at the last second. It's it's just nuts. 
that that's basically how I approach it as well. Like I don't I, I typically try not to even like do the auctions. I just try to do the buy it now or best offer kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But then but then Ted showed us a, a person recently who's selling a bunch of cells on there for really cheap. And I was just like, oh, but they are auction. Uh, let me see what I can do. And I, I, I only bid on like two of them. And one of them I lost out by literally a dollar. And I was just like, oh my oh. God. Like, I see how people get sucked into this now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like gambling. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a slot machine almost, you know? Yeah, and and the some the weird part about that guy selling the animation cells is that he just pairs uh, random backgrounds with this with the animation cells. Like they weren't the, necessarily the backgrounds. Every once in a while, it'll match up, but usually it's just a different Batman episode paired with that uh, that episode's animation cell. But then recently, we came across ones that just have Dexter's Laboratory backgrounds in them. <laughs> like they have absolutely nothing to do. So some guys just got this like you know room full of boxes of animation cells, and he's just like, send it out, send it out. Like he's not doing anything. <laughs> if you're watching this, what are you doing? <laughs> That's so funny. That's so yeah, funny. It's bizarre. There's like one of just Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Bullock standing in Dexter's laboratory, and it's like, is this a kids' you know a Cartoon Network commercial that I missed or something? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, we 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 got away from it a little bit, but maybe we should get a little more uh, talk a little more about the timeline stuff or because, your book that we didn't talk about at all. <laughs> yeah, in the ending, we kind of got off of that. Which, which do you want to cover first? Oh, I just, if you have any information about, you know, how far are you on the book? Do you need our help with the book? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, you know, right now, I'm, I'm, I still want it to just be my thing. I've thought a yeah. few times, oh, you know, should I get a co-writer on this? I mean, it might make sense because there's, because like, I mean, I did, I did this, this, uh, oral history of Batman for for the Batman the Animated Series for back issue 99 and that I think it ended up being like 20,000 words something like that um and so it's like it's like a novella mm -hmm. <laughs> oh and I wanted to cover that then Superman then Batman Beyond then the Justice League shows and then oh well should I include Static uh and and Zeta Project because they're yes. <laughs> They're part of the DCU AU, but like Static was kind of grandfathered in, and Zeta was like a spinoff of a spinoff, and so Zeta, uh, Zeta, well, we get it. <laughs> I know Zeta I, is important. Honestly, I haven't <laughs> really seen much of the Zeta project, so that is I would be into that really, really fresh. The, um, the second season's better than the first. I'll, 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 I'll give you that much going in. And they only did like well, what twenty six episodes of yeah. Zeta. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not much. Did they ever release it on home video or no? Yeah, yes. uh, so, so they released season one back in like 2009 or so. And they had plans to release season two. Like there was there was a press release saying, here's the bonus features and all that fun stuff. <laughs> and then season one didn't sell quite well enough. So they, they axed the season two plans. And then now all these years later, like around the same time they were doing the Static Shock DVDs for uh, Warner Warner Archive, they did uh, season they did a season one reprint and a season two finally of the. It was Zeta like twenty eighteen or something before we got season two. Yeah. But season two has none of the bonus features yep. that were promised to be coming on that DVD all the way back in two thousand nine. So those yeah. are sitting in some kind of Warner vault somewhere. Yeah. So hopefully we get to talk to Zeta Project uh, producers and stuff at some point and be like, so how do we see that? And tell us everything <laughs> that you said. Well, <laughs> maybe they're sitting in a vault, but maybe they were just planned, but they never did them. You well, we've heard they... from, yeah, the the voice actress for Roe, her name escapes me at the moment. Uh, uh, Jul Julie, Julie Nathanson? Yes. Right? Yes, sorry, Julie, if you're watching. Uh, uh, we talked to her a few months ago, uh, and she mentioned that yeah, they did like a whole roundtable discussion with Bob Goodman about the pot, the future of the show if they had gotten a season three. Uh, okay. But then it just yeah, we'll never see that, or or we maybe we'll see that. So. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it could see the light of day if yeah. if they did. 
Um, I was just thinking if they'd announced it that far in advance, maybe they didn't get to produce it. But yeah, I mean, I, at I least think, I think I think maybe what it was was they announced it for the season one DVD and then it didn't end up on the season one DVD and then Bob Goodman said, we're saving it for the season two DVD. Mm -hmm. In 10 yeah. years. <laughs> that yeah. But yeah. either way, I understand if you're, if you're skipping over some of the stuff. Uh, is, your, is your plan just to kind of give it that same treatment as the Batman stuff of, you know, more or less a, a uh not not a shortened what am i trying to say abridged uh but a little bit of a, a truncated history of you know the entire creation of the show and then move on to superman etc yeah i mean well i mean i've been i'm still talking to people from batman the animated series uh mm -hmm. whenever i'm expanding my my coverage of batman like i wasn't able to speak to lauren lester or diane mm -hmm. pershing until after my deadline for back issue. So I have I have interviews with them. I have inter interviews with other people I've been trying to set up. I've talked to uh, Kevin and Dan a few times, uh, uh, Kevin Alfieri and Dan Reba, I should say, mm -hmm. um, a few times since. And and I wanna move forward with them even more, um, but I'm, I'm doing it sort of a, a, a very scattered approach because it's just, you know, whoever you, you are able to talk to at yeah. any given time. And of course, I'm you know, like you guys, I'm trying to do this stuff around a day job and like living my life. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's taken a long time, but uh, you know, hopefully when it, it finally sees the light of day, everybody will be like, oh, well, that's why it took so long. Right. <laughs> and I, and I, I completely do not blame you for that because we've been in that same boat this whole time. The channel, the YouTube channel was sort of a, uh, the secondary yeah it was it was kind of a way to pat to kill time and keep people like remembering that we exist while we work on this giant encyclopedia of a dcau website uh right. but it's just been yeah now that the channel and comic and everything have become a lot more time consuming because we're producing them all the time the i shouldn't say the comic is all the time <laughs> but it, it takes a lot of time to make uh the, the website has kind of taken a back burner, but it's always just very slowly being worked on uh, behind the scenes because, you know, we'll constantly be finding more behind the scenes artwork or, oh, this official biography for this character that we never had or, you know, whatever. We've got fan artists working on, uh, you know, profile pictures for characters that we don't have model sheets for and all this stuff. Uh, but that's something that, you know, I started working on in middle school <laughs> and, you know, yeah. there was a version online for a while. It was really shitty. It was like old HTML that nobody uses anymore. And then I took that down, started working on another one, had it almost done around 2010. And it was just Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. And then Ted and I decided, why don't we just do the entirety of the DCAU? We're like, that makes more sense. And then yeah. it's just been this for forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm at that weird point in the project. I have this habit of, of getting overly ambitious but i don't realize i'm being overly ambitious until <laughs> middle of the project and 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 now i'm at the point where it's like there's a lot more to do on it but i've done so much on it already i've got to see it through I yeah mean, i can't i can't abandon ship <laughs> at, at this point um it, you know the tough thing is just uh getting to talk to the actors in particular just because there are more hoops you have to jump through uh, you have to go through like agents to managers, and I actually signed up for an IMDb Pro account just so I could get those people's yeah. information. I could I've reach been out. considering that, but I haven't uh, bit the bullet yet. So you can write it <laughs> off on your taxes. I Jake. could, yeah. Exactly. That's my rationale. That was, it's like a hundred something bucks a year, um, and I've I've had it renewing for a few years now. Um, of course, uh, I've heard that sometimes even the stuff on IMDb is inaccurate in terms mm -hmm. of representation. So you might be contacting somebody who doesn't represent a particular actor anymore. And if they're not, they're no longer that actor's representation, they're not really inclined to be like, oh, hey, John, the person you want to speak to is this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, our, our friends at the DCAU Review Podcast who were in by this point in the stream 
I believe have already been on. <laughs> I'd have to look at the schedule. Uh, they uh, they do. Oh, a... No, I saw that. It was great. It was great. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Your best work. <laughs> Thanks. I don't remember if I'm on that one. I think I... <laughs> that was what was so good about it, James. <laughs> As I was. James is not in it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, John, is that <laughs> they pull all of their episode descriptions off of IMDb. So whenever they start talking about an episode, they'll read what it you know what it says on there. But almost all the time, those are just written by fans. They're not actually the right. Warner They're not a fan. distributed. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> I told them that I, they had me on as a guest one time and I told them that like you guys realize like IMDB is almost as easily editable as Wikipedia like I, I've gone on there I was an extra in a James Franco movie in like one scene I was an apple picker in a background and I <laughs> was able to go into the movie you know on IMDB and add myself as like apple picker number 72 you know whatever right it's not an official credit from the producers of the movie. That, and I will go and look and there's just billions of apple pickers on this list of <laughs> people that are like, some are spelled differently, some are, uh, you know, capitalized. So it just, it's just, it's a mess, but it is. One of them it. was accidentally apple picker and now yeah. you're what they're, <laughs> what they're apple doing. Picker, yeah. <laughs> it's just a lawyer who just looks at apples. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you appling Tom, you. <laughs> People have oh, those are some nice apples. Like, hey, how you like them apples? <laughs> yeah, God. What has this stream become? <laughs> well, I've gone through all the stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. Is there anything well, else that you wanted to talk about? He was, he was <laughs> saying he wanted to touch back on the timeline. Oh, yeah. you're right, you're right. We, we, didn't, we didn't hit on our main point of contention on the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got uh, another hour coming up here, at John Trump. <laughs> you know, how far are we in? What time do we start at? Well, we got like ten minutes or so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's enough. I mean, do you guys want to start, or should I? I mean, it's your it's your channel. You you can say something about the timeline, and then we'll tell you why you're wrong about it. Like, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> See again, not not right or wrong. It's I... disagreements. <laughs> Yeah, no, and for those who don't know what we're talking about, we, uh, there, there's been, we've had a back and forth with John for probably a couple of years now on Twitter yeah. and, and Facebook and stuff about like, you know, we, we have such a, a literal understanding of the DCAU timeline, whereas, you know, you're, you're probably more, you're on more of the side of Bruce Tim of like, you know, it's a, it's a, I'm like, no specific dates, there is no time, there's just always, you know, Batman Beyond is in the future, everything else is in the present, the end kind of a thing but that which always sometimes i 50 years from now yeah right or whenever, whenever now yeah. is yeah yeah so, sometimes i wish that that was how we treated it only because it would be way less headaches but the timeline videos do pretty well on the channel so <laughs> i'm not complaining oh, no. <laughs> and i still watch them because i find them fascinating and i <laughs> and i will like pinch certain conclusions like when i agree with your logic mm -hmm. i'm like yeah, I, I do agree with him there. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, other times I'm like, okay, well, I don't I don't really agree with you there, but it's interesting <laughs> um, to, to see how you arrived at it. Um, my feeling is, yeah, the, the the DCAU it takes place in like in eternal now. Like whenever you are watching an episode, it's taking place now, even if there are references to like the mid '90s in it. Um, because like if they Little revive, Romeo's it, looking good <laughs> for 2020. Okay. Said so Little Romeo's looking good for 2020. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I know Static Shock. They used a whole lot more um, uh, <laughs> of of 90s pop culture. I see now why you not don't want to include that one in your book. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, Static is another thing. Okay, that's a, that's a tangent I'll handle in a few minutes. Right, Let, right. Let's timeline. <laughs> yes. Like my feeling is if they revive. Uh, Batman the Animated Series tomorrow, mm -hmm. or they revive Justice League tomorrow. <laughs> uh, they the characters wouldn't suddenly be in like their fifties or sixties mm -hmm. because like 20, 30 years have passed for them. They would still be like around thirty, thirty five, most likely. So I th I think it's I will say this for a lack of a better word. I think it's a little silly to be like, oh yes, this absolutely took place. In, in 1992, um, especially because 
I always factor in creator intent a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, you know, Bruce Tim, he's not really a believer in using specific dates. And a lot of the specific dates that you guys use as data points are things from the tie-in comics or from, or like the, the driver's license year on, from Sub-Zero. Right. Which, you know, Bruce wasn't involved in. Um, there was a uh, 1992 in Beware the Grey Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm like, um, I think uh, at the end of uh, Beware the Great Ghost, they even edited out the the year on the on the recent Blu-ray release. No, nope, it's, st it's still there. <laughs> it, it, it's still there. It looks a lot nicer. Yeah, they like, cleaned it up. Like, even. <laughs> originally, originally, like it was just like the date, like just in a white box on it, and now it looks like it's all part of that. Um, yeah. It looks like it's all part of that that magazine cover, like legitimately. Right. Right. Well, with all of this, with the, with the new Adventures Continue comic, you know, since the, in, we're talking about creator intention, that's always basically my, like, base for our Will It Cannon episodes, um, yeah. is like, you know, Brainiac Attacks, not intended to be DCAU, and then also it was, here's... was yeah. produced by the people. Yeah, and then Fine. also Fine. here's these 50 other reasons why it doesn't work. It's not. Right. And then stuff like Fatal Five intended to be dcau bruce tim says it is all the you know all this stuff right and here's right. 50 other reasons why it does work and that kind of thing when, when we're talking five i think yeah just as another um a dc animated movie and i think they decided somewhere in the production process right. like let's do it with with the the btas look um yeah. And and so, you know, even that, like that very easily could not have been, like if they animated that in a different style, would you consider it canon to the DCAU? Right, I mean, yeah, yeah and, and I mean, it would also, probably... yeah, but also, it's it's stuff like, you know, with Bat Batman and Harley Quinn is the one that, that gets people the most with, with their, you know, oh, it's yeah. just in the same style, it's not actually part of the thing when all these other you know, things are pointing to, yes, it is actually, you just don't like it, that you don't want it to be <laughs> that kind yeah. of a thing. I'm and we're going to always be stubborn about that, but it is, it is. So, so shut up, people. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> shut up, people. <laughs> like, that, like I was, like I was saying from the, uh, the top of the timeline, uh, 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 talking is for the most part, this was an experiment for myself to, mm -hmm be like okay i want to experience this world in its entirety you know and it would be nice to know where all of these things slot in and as we get further and further into you know all of this tie-in material it's obvious to a degree a pretty big degree that a lot of the times the left hand and the right hand just don't agree with each other at all. Um, right. But like, I mean, we're seen with, you know, Batman, the adventures continue that they're just like, Batman adventures volume two out of here. Lost years go away. Is the stuff from the original Batman adventures canon? Maybe a little bit man bat still man bat, even <laughs> though they were cured in the, in the cartoon show. Firefly, <laughs> but whatever you know, and, and and so it's it's at the end of the day, like it doesn't work the way that I wanted it to work back in you know 2012, 2013 when I started uh, uh, all of this. Well, it's so a I'm, constantly moving target if they're producing new material, you know. Yeah, and I, and I mean at that time they weren't like like right. we got we got that what batman beyond short in 2014 and like that that was just a oh sweet awesome like this is one random offshoot new thing that we're getting and that's gonna be it that's the last thing <laughs> uh, thank you dc for this return to the thing we were doing eight years ago that's thank you the Kirby good, enthusiasm good too, you. So. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we're getting you know Batman Ninja Turtles adventures and then Batman and Harley Quinn and th the two tie-in comics with that and then right. Paul Dini's doing Harley loves Joker in the in the uh, the animated style and then Justice League versus the Fatal Five and now we've got the fandom shorts and now we got Batman the adventures continues and this that and the other and luckily for the most part, 
the people who are behind these things kind of follow suit with the the intention of like not doing too many like pop culture references or anything and so it ends up being able to work perfectly fine with with what's been pre-established through all this other stuff but then you get something like batman the adventures continues that throws everything out and then says 9 11 happened and you're just like (laughs) yeah uh, when you start doing things like okay well maybe 9 11 happened in a different year in the dcau or or this particular basketball player's career started you know sooner than it did that's when i feel like you're you're creating more problems than you need (laughs) you know yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I've I've gotten to the to a point yeah. where like, I yeah. have one of those mind map apps where it's just like yeah. instead of having the the actual you know detective cork board up on my wall anymore, it's just I've got one of those apps and I'm just like, okay, this has to happen before this because the Riddler debuts here. This and, and like I'm trying on that to not include any dates mm-hmm. until like it's not a web anymore and it's more of a straight line. Right, but, right. Yeah, I mean, that's just, the, the, I under, honestly understand why you approach it that way, John, because that's a much less, or a much more like uh, feel good, I guess, a way to approach it is like, yeah, yeah. like we're talking about like, okay. Well, it's less it's constrict- like, Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, and the stuff with, you know, we're even seeing in, not that there's, I don't think there's been any actual dates in the Adventures Continue, but they've, you know, Batgirl right. has a smartphone and stuff like that, where you're talking about, you know, the technology or the world that they live in is always now, you know, whatever, whatever now is, right. that kind of stuff. But yeah, and then, but then we just always have to deal with these random, like, like last year's having like a ni- big 1997 across the thing and like, okay, well, even if we wanted to include this, like it has to be 1997. <laughs> There's no way around it. Kind of stuff, yeah. That was in the tie-in comic. Right, right episode itself so yeah that I, that i think gives you a little leeway personally yeah, yeah I mean, uh, when, when it's interpreted into the cartoon it doesn't have the date but then at the same time we're also talking about the creator intent stuff is like some of the writers of that stuff cross over into the comics where do we now consider those comics canon to the show because you know a specific writer or, or director or whatever was on was in charge of this comic that was also on the show and that kind of a thing as well as like we're finding out that Paul Dini helped create the Lost Years timeline, right? And it's and it's like yeah. okay, so was 1997 something? <laughs> was it that listed there, or did someone just draw it on there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think when they were putting together uh, the new Batman Adventures, I think they just said like, oh, it's been like two or three years since right. the last episodes, and this is what's happened in that time. I think mm-hmm. that is probably and that they worked it out, and. You know, you you also have to remember a lot of times they just do things because they it seems fun or it seems like a good idea. Like you know, Man Bat is probably in the latest issue just because Ty Templeton wanted to draw Man Bat, or right. Alan or Paul wanted to uh, feature him in somewhere. I I don't know how tightly they're scripting this. There's series, a Man Bat action figure, so he must be in the comic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean that, that's another factor. Like yeah. we've got the figures, we have to fig- feature all these characters in here at some point. You figure out how it makes sense. Yep. You know, so it's it's probably a lot of that going on. Oh, for sure. I mean, like we've we've talked to Ty Templeton a time or two. Like when uh, <laughs> the Batman and Harley Quinn tie-ins were coming out, that he uh, that he wrote, like he threw Condiment King in there, right? And, and it was just like, wait a second. In Batman the Animated Series, he was only a villain because of mind control. What's going on all these years mm-hmm. later where we have to be right. in like Justice League time that he's, and like, that's one thing that the timelining does kind of, you know, open itself to is you get to theorize about, I mean, I'm sure you could, you yeah. know, theorize without the timeline stuff, but when you have it set up as a rigid thing, it's just like, oh, okay, we know this, 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 this about Mr. Freeze's life or Harvey Dent's life. And so- right. To right, right. explain this thing, it must have happened here, and, and and this is what was going on at that time, and that's why it makes sense. Like even even in my timeline, I was like, okay, Harvey Dent, uh, he he served like two terms as DA in Gotham City, and okay, Gotham City is roughly parallel to New York, 
And uh, I looked it up in like DAs, I think in New York, it served like three year terms. So I was like, okay, so that's six years he was DA. Um, and he, we know he became a DA five years before Pretty Poison. So I'm, you're trying to figure this out and it's this weird mixture of logic and creativity, which is right. what I love timelines. And also, because it lets you see connections that you didn't see before. Right, yeah. like I, I don't, I don't know if you saw our um, our episode on like Bizarro or whatever, but like there's like I didn't see that it, one. No. There's, 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 whenever the Justice League's like fighting Brainiac and it's got like uh -huh. screens of all of the world that like he's destroyed right. or whatever. One of the backgrounds is a reused background of uh, of Bizarro's world, and so oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so in in like the Superman Adventures comics, there's uh there's it's the the one that's like twenty two different story twenty two different one page stories or whatever. And there's one where Bizarro's world like blows up by the end. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so it's just like, okay, so we know Bizarro was, you know, here and we know or we 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 can guess from this background painting that Brainiac destroyed Bizarro's world, so now Brainiac is responsible for what we saw here in the Superman Adventures series. Right. Like, this is why Bizarro's back on Earth by the and, time of what, just if, 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 you get a, if you get a cool story or a cool fan theory out of that, that's wonderful, that's terrific, that's what it's for. I mean, but a part of me, I have to look at that and be like, well, they just grabbed a background yeah. of an looking world because they needed as many backgrounds as possible, and, they, and it's, you know, cheaper if you can just get as much mileage out of the pre-existing production art as you can. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, like, like I, I, I know, I know that's the reasons that those things are happening. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but it 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 it's in my head, it feels like the world is much more fleshed out when you take those things literally. Yeah, Batman yeah. says, "I don't believe in coincidence." So that's. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to have at least a pinch of coincidence. Yeah, yeah. But the real world has coincidences. Right. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, maybe it's an alien world that just happens to look like Bizarro's world. I don't I don't know on that particular case. But like you know, they use the same background for the Legion's uh, 30th century that, as for Gorilla City. Right. In in some episode, and I forget which came well, first. But, have you ever heard of evolution? Is all of Earth, <laughs> the 30th century? And, yeah, in the 30th and, century. <laughs> The gorillas from Gorilla City have turned into the Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> like every, every of the Legion of Metropolis is just Gorilla City. It's a planet-wide mm -hmm. city. It's yeah. It's the <laughs> it's the what? It's the Planet of the Apes. Yes, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> there, so there's a whole legacies issue for you right there. <laughs> yeah, I think my favorite one that we've like uncovered from the timeline stuff is uh, the if if you count since the Batman Harley Quinn movie is canon, if you're counting the tie-in comics to that as an extension of the movie, uh, since they're made by the same people basically and mandated you know, by the movie and whatever, the, there is logic you can pull from that that would insinuate, long story short, that Harley Quinn is on a Task Force X mission by the time of the- Oh yeah, I saw that one, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. my favorite one because it gives so much, it, it, it allows me to, believe that she would actually do this after reforming in that movie if mm -hmm. she's being like forced to do this and actually you know is on a secret you know mission and stuff like this so I, I really like that one even though if it's not actually real or whatever it's it yeah. makes the most sense out of anything it's, that a, we've done. <laughs> it's 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 canon for now yeah <laughs> until well, they I, do another yeah, thing yeah as long as, the, as long as there isn't anything that is directly contradicting it at that yeah. point it's you can believe whatever you want and you would be right. Um, like when I was working on my DCAU timeline, one of the things, one of the few things that bugs me about the DCAU is that you work out the time and just because of Robin's age, Dick Grayson's age, Batman has to debut like nine, 10 years before Superman mm -hmm. uh, because of how the, that lined up. Um, but I was able, on my timeline, I was able to, I'm backdating Superman's debut a little bit because it, like there are a few References like um, in the second uh, Clock King episode, uh, when they're when they're going on the bat cycle super fast, Robin goes faster than a speeding bullet, and I'm like, mm. well, would you use that phrase before Superman <laughs> in existence in that world? And and can I use that to justify Superman? In, and it's right. a very tenuous way to do it, <laughs> but if you can make it work, yeah, why not? And then they can debut a little bit closer together. Mm -hmm. 
It's just you know, a reused background, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that about the oh, background? I said, it's just a reused background. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, you, I mean, you all. We, everybody has to decide for themselves yeah. where the line is, where where it lies. And, of course, where... and you know, between the three of us, also, we're not the only ones to have made timelines on this thing. We got, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oh my God! Can they, Yo Jimbo at the DCAU resource website? He has an entire timeline. There's plenty of other people working on their own, and yeah, everyone has their own little stipulations of I'm building it based on these rules and that kind of thing. But and nobody has the wrong or right time like we're talking about. It's it's just yeah, how we exactly. do it. And I think that a lot of the like flack that we get from from some people is <laughs> the fact that we're well, okay, yeah. But more, more, more aggressive or or negative flack than than from you. It's because we're SJWs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, but because of the like um, the the what do, what do you want to call it? Not like f we're not famous by any means, but the the level we're at of of in the fandom of you know people whether they know us or not. Uh, will see it are more likely to see our timeline stuff than someone that just you know posted it to a blog or something no offense maddie sure <laughs> but uh that's how he started I mean, that's it. that's where it started yeah. but so like because of that you know it always kind of feels like we may be pushing this as like the only way to do it or whatever and i've thought about you know that oh maybe at the start of every timeline video we should have like a disclaimer that says like <laughs> This is just how we are choosing to do this. There's no right answer. You can do it however you want. Yeah. It would just take so much time every time to. The, the opinions of the Watchtower database yeah. do not, <laughs> do not like reflect. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we've got we've got one thing coming up, um, a Will It Canon, that like we were briefly talking about making it a choose your own adventure yeah. somehow. Yeah. Uh, um, so that way it could be like, look, like, it, it, it doesn't is matter. It, is. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter in the long scope uh, in, the, in yeah. the long scope of things. Like if you can make it work, and you can still enjoy stuff. Yeah. If yeah. you don't want it to work, then that's that's your prerogative as well. But like, <laughs> things are what they are, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I, I'm like with Batman: The Adventures Continue. I'm enjoying the story, and. I'm, I'm really just trying to stop that part of my brain that wants to make everything fit. And I've got that part of my brain too. It's very I mean, difficult reading. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been a comic ban fan for like 40 odd years. So, yeah. uh, you know, I have that and I've, I've, I've made all sorts of timelines and, and stuff. So I totally get where you're coming from. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to restrain myself until the story is over. And then I figure out like, okay, well, does this fit in my personal headcanon? I don't know. Yeah. I, like one of the things I like about the DCAU is it's kind of a cleaner version of DC continuity where they can kind of like avoid some of the wrong turns or not be as convoluted as the DC got. So I'm a little conflicted on the, the DCAU Batman having three Robins, mm -hmm. but, it, but it's a good story and I'm enjoying it and, and it's neat. And uh, well, I'm you glad know. you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like I, the book. <laughs> I I, like I, the I, story's not over yet, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and that and that's that's the approach that I'm trying to you know take with it. That the story's not over. Maybe it'll course correct the the the, the you know. In the finale, we'll I get Nora it. Freeze revived. Uh, we'll get an explanation for why the shawl of Magdalene mattered at all. We'll get it. <laughs> we'll be yeah. we'll be told oh, that somehow to... this doesn't undercut Return of the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I Batman mean, Beyond. I still, part of me, I still kind of regard that as an alternate future, and I know that's something where I disagree with Bruce right. and Alan, folks who did that show where they're like, well, no, that's the definite future. But I think there's enough wiggle room in there. Like we saw an alternate version of the Batman Beyond future in, in Justice League Unlimited when they did Once in Future Thing. So I think that can give you enough wiggle room that you could say, this is not necessarily the definitive ending of, of Bruce Wayne, you know? Because mm -hmm. personally, I would want Bruce Wayne to have a slightly happier ending than Batman Beyond. But. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, I can see that, but then at the same time, they, you know, slapped epilogue into Justice League Unlimited. So <laughs> I know, I know. It's like, and I'm, 
when they when they did that, I, w I wasn't too nuts about that because I was just like, this this is possibly Justice League's finale. I don't want to watch a Batman Beyond. <laughs> yeah. you no, know, it was. And that's it was all like, we'll say uh, about the episode. <laughs> <laughs> like when they did the last episode of Enterprise, and they bring the next generation. Right, 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 right. But yeah, I, I I I do see where you're coming from with that, and I think yeah. that to a degree, it kind of reality. Right, because like when they started um, the adventures continues, like Deany and Burnett were saying, this is what you know we're approaching this as if we didn't do Batman Beyond, and like right, and, yeah. And so and so in my head, I'm trying to rationalize this as okay, this is just a different time stream. This is mm -hmm. this is uh, this is Justice yeah. League didn't exist. Justice League Unlimited didn't exist. Batman Beyond didn't exist. After the new Batman adventures, this is where this 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 universe, this story goes. Like we've got we've got Batman the animated series, the new Batman adventures, and the Superman animated series. And then right. this. This is, you know, a, a yeah. separate branch of the multiverse than the one that goes into Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. Right, right. I mean, because I mean, realistically, when you're making a new story, if your story if you're, you're coming up with what you think is a cool story, but it conflicts with your existing continuity. You you either throw out the continuity or you just find a way to massage it. I mean, hell, for years, I mean, they did that one episode of Superman where they had Kyle Rayner's Green Lantern, and they just disregarded it when they just yeah. leave because, hey, we think it would be cooler to have Jon Stewart. And then eventually they figured out a way to just say like, oh yeah, uh, Kyle went into space. So now that episode's back in continuity again. Right. And you have to have that sort of flexibility to it, I think. Otherwise, it's it's going to get to the point where it's just going to handcuff you and you can't tell any kind of story because yeah. it doesn't fit into this story that you did 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah, so. as, I, as I stated in our uh, Fatal Five Willet Cannon, there's a bunch of space stuff going on out there that nobody knows about all the time. <laughs> and so you can never, yeah. that'll explain most of the problems that you'll ever arise in any of this stuff. Right, it's right. Space stuff, I mean, I, time I, travel, like... Yeah. Is John Stewart in space? Why does Wonder Woman have a sword now? <laughs> yeah, because she got a sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and you just, you know, you can use that as as a stepping stone to like creating your own stories, like you guys have done, or you know, come up with your fan theory. And I think that's cool. That's part of the fun of it because then you're an active participant in it. You know. Right. Yep, I agree. And with that, we should probably wrap up <laughs> the, the the chat. Because we're yeah. we're going up to an hour and a half at this point, so I we very much appreciate you being on here and and uh, anyone watching, uh, John Trumbull, you should tell them to subscribe to the Watchtower database so that we get. <laughs> so subscribe we get to the Watchtower database, and then someday you can have fun timeline arguments like I just did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I hope that that's not the last one that we have in a format like this. I hope we can talk to you again uh, sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah, also, that would be much much love to the Twitch chat. I'm sure you guys are just like, hey, some of y'all probably, you know, came, joined in here, thinking we're live. This one has been pre-recorded. Sorry we weren't interacting with you all. But much love to you. Keep keep watching. And if you had a question you were looking for us to answer, drop it in one that's not pre-recorded. <laughs> not we'll wearing get to this it. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, John. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon on on the internet at some and somewhere. I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, look look for my next rebuttal video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you should just start doing video replies to every one of our videos. <laughs> or just, just be alone in a bunker. Here's why you're talking wrong. <laughs> there there have been there have been a few. This is why watch our database is wrong videos. And Not a lot. About three views. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot, but there's been a couple. Wasn't one of them by like a little child or something? Yeah, well, time to end the call. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>